check out this app that I built for guitar players within six days. First, I'm gonna show you the gameplay, then I'm gonna show you how and why I built it. Oh, and make sure your volume is turned down. We're about to get some metal in here. All right, so check that out. A little bit of stats at the end. Super, super fun stuff. This is obviously an app that's gonna help, a web-based app that's gonna help guitar players learn fret note locations here on the neck because that's one of the most boring things you can do. It's like, you know, where's G? It's all over the neck. There's like seven different locations G can be throughout all this mess here. And so this makes it fun. Actually, I've even I shared it last night on the Guitar Lessons subreddit. So if I show you that real quick, here is some of the comments. Let me scroll up just to show you. I, it already has 84 likes, I, 16 different comments. This is gonna definitely go way up higher because I just submitted it on a Sunday night and it's Monday morning. Um, but we can already see I, that, let's see here. This is definitely going to my bookmarks, I, nice, Nice work, would love something similar that would help me with timing and give feedback. So I'm already getting uh, feedback on features and stuff. Um, just tried this with the mic and acoustic because I don't really have my electric with me. It works perfectly well. So I didn't even know, like, I didn't even try testing it with a microphone next to like an acoustic guitar. So you don't even have to be plugged in. This right here is plugged in to that Kemper, which is my amp. And the Kemper is all the way over here connected into my Focusrite audio interface, which goes into my computer through USB. But really, if you just had a mic, somebody even said it works on their phone. <laughs> so I need to make it responsive still. Um, so, op, okay, op, good news, it does work with Rocksmith's 2014 real tone cable, whatever the hell that is. So this is a very good sign that you know other guitarists like what I've built. So there definitely is something here that I could expand upon, perhaps in the future. So just to show you some of the features, uh, in the settings area. So there's a note duration. So if I put this to one second, it's gonna go really fast. It's like C, D, I missed that, E, very fun. And then obviously if we switch this to like seven seconds, this would be much more beneficial to somebody who's just starting out like uh, B. There we go, it gives them more time. Um, there's also a little fretboard down here. It shows all the different note locations which can be toggled on and off. So another thing in other areas I have is uh, this will show all the different audio devices connected to your PC so you can choose the right one. Uh, and then there's also a little volume meter. And then also enable background music. We can change the track here. I only have three of them. They're just like really low compressed um, MP3 files. And then the ability to toggle on and off the virtual fretboard. So there's so many other ideas that I can eventually integrate in this. So, how did I build it, all right? So I used Cursor exclusively for this. And the tech stack basically looks like this. I'm gonna put it up here somewhere to the side of me so that I don't have to sit there and memorize everything. But it's based on Next.js and Spline 3D and the Web Audio API. Those are the core elements that I used. So let me show you what the Spline 3D file looks like. So essentially here it is. Uh, let me go back and turn on the noise that I had and the brightness, okay. So this is basically the scene, but I've locked it so you can't orbit around in the browser. Um, and look at the glass, uh, liquid glass effect. Yes, I, I completely embrace that just because it's a trend right now. I thought people would think it was funny and maybe annoying, <laughs> but I actually like it because it, it, in this context, it works very well because there's good contrast. I made the buttons a little bit uh, darker so that we ensure proper contrast uh, of everything happening here. What's also cool is there's a particle effect. So if I click on the particle em emitter here in the background, you'll see slowly but surely the particles emitting from the guitar neck itself, which you can see on notefury.com if you check it out here anyhow in the background. So the, the main thing though that I had to learn, which wasn't much of a learning curve in and of itself is how to attach uh, variables and be able to control the scene from within JavaScript and be able to communicate with cursor on how to do so. So for instance, um, the note, this 3D note right here, 
So if I grab this 3D note uh, right here, um, and you can see obviously it animates in, it twists, it rotates in into, into place, and that's controlled by variables. So if I click on the scale run right here, you can see all the variables that I have associated and have created for a part of this project. So note scale right here. So X, Y, and Z is all tied to note scale. So then in cursor, all I have to do is say, I uh, animate note scale from zero to one over the duration of like one second and add easing. And I was able also to fine tune those type of animations by having it build in a temporary configurator in the UI so that I don't have to sit there wasting prompts. You know, that way I can just kind of create things, you know, visually and then tell it the values thereafter. And that's really the main gist of how I was able to connect Spline with Cursor and make it interactive. One other thing that was really difficult in the beginning is I needed to validate this idea and see if it even, would even work with the Web Audio API. I didn't know if it would be able to detect the correct notes that I was playing. So I almost quit the project early on, the first day or two, when I was trying to get this configurator working and get the settings dialed in so that it wouldn't trigger too many false notes. Sometimes I would be up here and it would trigger both of those for the same note. So I spent a lot of time, as you can see, with the uh, different configuration options that I had cursor built to try to help me dial in the note detection system. I typically would never have tried to have tackled something like this on my own without hiring an actual developer. And now I can knock these projects out really fast at light speed. It is insane. So hopefully, if you guys are designers and you haven't really stepped into the world of AI coding, do it right now because you're gonna have the most power because when we're in a world where everybody can code, essentially. The one differentiating factor is going to be the UI and how we implement those UIs. So creative people do have an edge in this regard. So I'm excited to share more of what I build with you guys here in, you know, very soon. Let me know what you think. I'll see you later. <laughs>